Welcome to the channel where we explore the amazing applications of quantum physics. In this video, we'll learn about the Doppler effect, how it affects the frequencies of waves when traveling faster and faster until you reach the speed of light. But before we move on remember to like and subscribe for more content like this. The Doppler effect is the phenomenon that occurs when a wave source and an observer are moving relative to each other. The most common example of this is the sound of a speeding car or a siren. As the car or the siren approaches you, you hear a higher pitch than the actual frequency emitted by the source. As it passes by you and moves away, you hear a lower pitch. This is because the motion of the source changes the distance between the wave crests, and therefore the wavelength and the frequency of the waves. The same principle applies to light waves, which are a form of electromagnetic radiation. Light waves have different frequencies and wavelengths that correspond to different colors. The visible spectrum ranges from red, which has the lowest frequency and longest wavelength, to violet, which has the highest frequency and shortest wavelength. When a light source is moving towards or away from an observer, its color appears to shift towards the blue or red end of the spectrum, respectively. This is known as the Doppler shift or Doppler effect for light. The Doppler effect for light has many applications in astronomy and cosmology. It allows us to measure the speed and distance of stars, galaxies and other celestial objects by analyzing their spectra. For example, if a star is moving away from us, its light will be shifted towards the red end of the spectrum, indicating that its wavelength has increased and its frequency has decreased. This is called a redshift. The amount of redshift is proportional to the speed of recession of the star. Similarly, if a star is moving towards us, its light will be shifted towards the blue end of the spectrum, indicating that its wavelength has decreased and its frequency has increased. This is called a blue shift. The amount of blue shift is proportional to the speed of approach of the star. But what happens when a light source is moving very fast, close to the speed of light? Does the Doppler effect still apply? The answer is yes, but with some modifications. The speed of light in vacuum, denoted by C, is a universal physical constant that is approximately 300,000 kilometers per second. According to Einstein's special theory of relativity, nothing can travel faster than light in vacuum, and light always travels at this constant speed regardless of the motion of the source or the observer. This means that we need to take into account some relativistic effects when dealing with very high speeds. One of these effects is time dilation, which means that time runs slower for an observer who is moving at a high speed compared to an observer who is at rest or moving at a lower speed. Another effect is length contraction, which means that lengths along the direction of motion are shortened for an observer who is moving at a high speed compared to an observer who is at rest or moving at a lower speed. These effects have consequences for how we measure frequencies and wavelengths of light. To understand how these effects modify the Doppler effect for light, let's consider two scenarios, one where the source is moving and one where the observer is moving. Scenario 1, the source is moving. Suppose we have a light source that emits light waves with frequency f0 and wavelength lambda0 when it is at rest relative to us. Now suppose that this source starts moving towards us with a speed v that is close to c. What will we see? First, we need to realize that from our perspective, time runs slower for the source due to time dilation. This means that we will see fewer wave crests emitted by the source per unit time than if it were at rest. This will reduce the frequency of the light waves that we receive. Second, we need to realize that from our perspective, length along the direction of motion is shortened for the source due to length contraction. This means that the distance between the wave crests emitted by the source will be smaller than if it were at rest. This will increase the frequency of the light waves that we receive. These two effects work in opposite directions, but the second effect is stronger than the first. Therefore, the net result is that we will see an increase in the frequency of the light waves from the source. 
This means that the light will be shifted towards the blue end of the spectrum. This is called a relativistic blue shift. The formula for calculating the relativistic blue shift is on the screen. Where f is the observed frequency, f0 is the emitted frequency, v is the speed of the source, and c is the speed of light. As you can see, as v approaches c, f becomes very large, meaning that the light becomes very blue. In fact, if v equals c, f becomes infinite, meaning that the light becomes invisible to us. Scenario 2, the observer is moving. Now suppose that we have a light source that emits light waves with frequency f0 and wavelength lambda0 when it is at rest relative to us. But this time, we start moving towards the source with a speed v that is close to c. What will we see? First, we need to realize that from our perspective, time runs slower for us due to time dilation. This means that we will see more wave crests reaching us per unit time than if we were at rest. This will increase the frequency of the light waves that we receive. Second, we need to realize that from our perspective, length along the direction of motion is shortened for us due to length contraction. This means that the distance between the wave crests reaching us will be smaller than if we were at rest. This will increase the frequency of the light waves that we receive. These two effects work in the same direction, and the net result is that we will see a larger increase in the frequency of the light waves from the source. This means that the light will be shifted more towards the blue end of the spectrum. This is also called a relativistic blue shift. The formula for calculating the relativistic blue shift is on the screen. Where f is the observed frequency, f0 is the emitted frequency, v is the speed of the observer, and c is the speed of light. As you can see, as v approaches c, f becomes very large, meaning that the light becomes very blue. In fact, if v equals c, f becomes infinite, meaning that the light becomes invisible to us. These are some of the ways that the Doppler effect for light changes when we approach the speed of light. The Doppler effect for light is not only a scientific phenomenon but also a source of wonder and inspiration. It shows us how our perception of reality depends on our motion and perspective. Thank you for watching Quantum World. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe for more content like this.